You just unboxed your new gaming PC and whether you bought it pre-built off the shelf or you've customized it by selecting some or all the components yourself, you'll want to check to make sure it was set up properly and you didn't get ripped off. My name is Michael and I'm going to figure out everything you need to do to check your brand new gaming PC. First off, do not turn it on yet. Put on that static bracelet, ground yourself on the case, and let's open her up. Inside you might have this Instapack foam stuffing. It's used to secure the insides from getting damaged in shipping. The foam expands after being installed, so it might take some wiggling to get it out, or it might come out easily. Keep it around in case you need to send the system back. All right, here's a quick primer on what's inside your PC. So first we have the four RAM slots over here, and they have two RAM sticks inserted. This is basically the memory. Then we have this big thing down here is the graphics card, which holds the GPU. Uh, these things on the side are the case fans. There's four of them. And then we have the CPU cooler, which is right here, which has its own fan right here. And underneath it, down below, is the CPU. And basically what you have here is a hunk of metal with fins on it that draws the heat away from the CPU and the fan that blows the heat away. You may have a different uh, setup. You may have a water-cooled CPU cooler. In that case, you will have just a little square on top, and then that will use water to pull the heat away to some metal fins and then have fans that blow over those metal fins. So the same concept, get the heat away from the CPU and then blow air over it to cool it down. Uh, in the very back around this whole thing is the motherboard. And then you have down here your little hard drive in the M2 form. And underneath this shroud down here, which you can't see in this picture, is the power supply unit or the PSU. Let's start with the RAM. This motherboard, like most modern ones, can do dual channel RAM. So I wanna make sure the two RAM sticks are in different slots. Most skip the slot closest to the CPU for the first stick. And when I zoom in on the motherboard, you can see this is exactly what this board needs. As it tells you, the first two sticks go in DIMM A2 and DIMM B2. You can also check this in your motherboard manual. Now let's check out the video card. First off, if you're a gamer and your card has performance mode and quiet mode, you want to use performance mode. Quiet mode will just slow the fans on the video card, increasing heat and possibly reducing performance. So flick that little switch over to performance. Now let's check the power cables are properly seated and fully latched in by that little clip at the top. This card has two power slots. Your video card might have more or less, but make sure all slots are filled and the power cables are not daisy chained meaning they come straight from the power supply and the other connectors off the same cable are not plugged into anything else. Now let's spin the case around and open the other side panel to get a look at the power supply unit under the shroud. It can be non-modular like this one where all the cables are permanently attached or it could have some or all the cables modular like this one where you only plug in the cables you need. If so, you should have received the extra cables that you're not using so you can run power to peripherals you add later. You should check to make sure you got the PSU you ordered, and don't worry if the label's upside down as long as the fan inside the PSU vents properly, which is usually out of the bottom of the case. If you have an air-cooled CPU, make sure the fans are properly attached to the heatsink. In this PC, the fans were not attached. Wait, well, hold on a second. That fan is hanging down. Yeah, that's no good. Okay. The company claims they came loose during shipping. So I did a Zoom call to walk my non-PC literate cousin through finding all the pieces that came loose and attaching the fans to the heatsink. Good times. You also want to make sure the CPU fans are plugged into the CPU fan ports on the motherboard. This other PC had the CPU fan plugged into the pump port instead of the CPU fan port right next to it. The pump port is meant to power a CPU water cooler and keeps the water constantly circulating. As a result, this CPU fan runs at full speed all the time instead of throttling down when less cooling is needed. That's not why I'm unscrewing the motherboard. You'll find out about that issue later in the video. As you go through this internal checklist, take note of the component labels to make sure the internals you ordered are the ones you got. You can see the motherboard name here, as well as the hard drive model and capacity. And if you see something loose, fix it. One word of caution. Some things are unplugged for a reason. Loose plugs are bad, unplugged cables might be fine, so double check your motherboard manual before plugging in random cables. Case in point, 
This power slot on the motherboard does not need to be filled unless you're doing extreme overclocking, so it's not a mistake to leave this piece empty. The last thing to check before powering up are the case fans. Now this is a big topic, but to keep it simple, you can't go wrong with positive airflow with the front fans pulling air in, through the CPU cooler, and blowing out the back. Some fans have arrows on the side showing airflow direction, but a good rule of thumb for case and CPU fans is the covered side is exhaust and the open side is intake. This PC had all the fans blowing out and was a disaster for cooling, so I flipped the front side fans around, and once I replaced the Paltry CPU water cooler with a hefty Noctua air cooler, it ran as cool as can be. Okay, now it's time to power up. Connect the Wi-Fi antennas if you have them, plug the monitor into the video card, not the motherboard, hook up the rest of the peripherals, and let's start her up. If you press the power button and the PC doesn't boot up, don't panic. Just check that the switch on the outside of the power supply is on, and press the power button again. Assuming that it boots into your operating system, the first thing you want to check are the front hey. panel ports and buttons. You can test the USB ports with a thumb drive, USB keyboard, or mouse, or even your phone. Just make sure the PC recognizes them. The back ports are hardwired into the motherboard, so I expect those will be fine. By the way, if you don't see the labels for the ports on the back, then they forgot to install the I.O. shield. This PC was not recognizing the front USB 2.0 ports, so I opened it back up and took a look under the front panel. Comparing with the top, I can see that this is the USB 3. This is for power. This little one is to change the color of the LED lights, which leaves these two ribbon cables. One is for the sound ports, and one is for the USB 2.0 ports. I trace these around the back and down to where they should connect to the bottom of the motherboard, but only one is connected. I unplugged this one and confirmed it is the audio cable, and as you can see, the port name also has audio in it, and I confirmed this with the motherboard manual. So this is the audio port. So that meant the cable that was stuck behind the motherboard was the USB 2.0 cable. I looked through the back, and I could see the end of the cable, unplugged and stuck under the motherboard. So I had to remove the graphics card and unscrew the motherboard to get it free. And that's why you saw me removing those screws earlier. This is the same PC that had the CPU fan plugged into the pump port. I wonder if the company's gonna claim these happened in shipping too. Close up and boot your PC, hit that delete key or whatever you need to hit to get into the BIOS before Windows boots for two quick changes. First, enable the XMP profile, which stands for Extreme Memory Profile. If you have multiple profile options, choose the first one. Technically, this is overclocking your RAM, but if you don't do this on high performance RAM, it will run slower than its advertised speeds. The second change is to multi-core enhancement if your motherboard has this option. Not all of them do. I think only Asus boards with Intel chips have it, but it causes all your CPU cores to run at full speed all the time, even when not needed, which produces a lot of heat. I prefer to leave it off and let my core speed up only when needed, reducing the overall voltage and heat over the life of the CPU. Save your settings and exit into Windows. Back in Windows, make sure your video card drivers are set to use your monitor's maximum refresh rate. If your driver options don't go that high, it could be because you're using HDMI, so try using the display port and cable instead. And if switching to a new graphics card, even if the same manufacturer, do a clean install of your graphics drivers. If you have more than one hard drive, make sure the EFI and recovery partitions are on the same drive that boots into Windows, which is usually the C drive. If they are on a different drive and you upgrade that drive for more storage, you could lose those partitions and you won't be able to boot into Windows again. You should check your RAM. You might not encounter issues with bad RAM until the corrupt higher memory addresses are used, so run MemTest. I'll put a link down in the description below. Although you visually checked your components, you should also check them in Windows. Device Manager can show you your hard drives, graphics card, and processor. Task Manager can show your CPU and memory sticks and speeds. And the same can be seen in Windows properties. Don't worry if large capacities are slightly off. It's probably just the way the memory is marketed versus actually counted by your PC. Lastly, some people like to run benchmarks for their CPU, GPU, hard drives. You can find plenty of videos of that online. I like to also run hardware monitor from CPU ID and leave it running while playing resource hungry games. I alt tab out of the game to check my Mac CPU and GPU temps, make sure the fans are spinning and that my PC is not overheating. Temps under 80 degrees Celsius should be fine. That's it. Now peel off the last of that plastic film and go enjoy your new gaming desktop PC. Leave a comment below if you found this helpful or if you think there's something I might have missed. I'm always happy when people help me figure out something new.